reality that in the Eucharist, bread and wine become the body and blood, soul and divinity of Christ without ceasing to appear as bread and wine to our five senses is one of the most central mysteries of the Catholic faith. This faith is a doorway through which we, like the saints and mystics before us, may enter into a deeper perception of the, love, of the mercy and love manifested in and through Christ's sacramental presence in our midst. While one thing is seen with our bodily eyes, another reality is perceived through the eyes of faith. The real, true, and substantial presence of Christ in the Eucharist is the most profound reality of the sacrament. This mysterious change is very appropriately called by the Church transubstantiation. Though Christ is present to us in many ways in the liturgy, including in the assembly gathered, the presiding minister, and the word proclaimed, the Church also clearly affirms that the mode of Christ's presence under the Eucharistic species is unique. As St. Paul VI wrote, this presence is called real, not to exclude the idea that others are real too, but rather to indicate presence par excellence, because it is substantial, and through it, Christ becomes present, whole and entire, God and man. In the sacramental representation of his sacrifice, Christ holds back nothing, offering himself whole and entire. The use of the word substantial to mark the unique presence of Christ in the Eucharist is intended to convey the totality of the gift he offers to us. We celebrate today the Feast of St. Joseph, patron of the Universal Church and so many places around the world, including here in the Diocese of Buffalo and of course our beautiful cathedral, the seat of our bishop. The pandemic, which has seemingly come to what seems to be at least a manageable end, took many of us away from the communal celebration of the Eucharist nearly two years ago. Of course, as a priest, I never experienced that separation and cherish what a gift it was to continue to celebrate the Eucharist throughout these unprecedented times in our world. I don't mind sharing with you that when I elevate the consecrated host at Mass, adoring the substantial presence of Christ, I can't help but wonder and even experience a bit of what Joseph himself must have felt in those earliest hours of Jesus' life in Bethlehem. Confused, exhausted, exhilarated, marveling at the opportunity to cradle the Lord, to savor his presence and a bit of the glory of God as a gift to the world. If Christ holds nothing back from us, may we follow those who held nothing back from him, Joseph and Mary, the first to welcome his presence among us. Happy St. Joseph Day.